A surprising magma lies beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano. New research shows more molten rock beneath the Yellowstone caldera, but it's unlikely to erupt anytime soon. One of the magma reservoirs beneath the Yellowstone caldera, a massive crater and supervolcano, holds more molten molten rock than thought scientists before, according to new research published Thursday in the journal Science. The amount of molten rock beneath a volcano helps researchers determine how close the volcano is to an eruption. While there may be more liquid magma beneath Yellowstone than scientists thought, it's unlikely the giant mountain will erupt anytime soon. Magma consists of rocks and crystals with varying degrees of density. The more liquid or molten a magma is, the more likely a volcano is to erupt. Two large reservoirs full of magma exist beneath the Yellowstone caldera. One reservoir is about 3 to 10 miles below the surface, and another is 12 to 30 miles underground. Based on previous research, scientists thought the shallower reservoir was mostly solid, with only 5 to 15 percent of the rock melted. But now, after using advanced supercomputers to reanalyze existing seismic data from the last 20 years, they believe the proportion is actually 16 to 20 percent. This amount is still far below the threshold of liquid magma, around 35 to 50 percent, that scientists believe would trigger an eruption. While the new findings don't change the level of volcanic risk, they represent a major improvement in our ability to understand what lies beneath Yellowstone said Carrie Cooper. Earth and planetary scientists at the University of California, Davis, who were not involved in the research. Involved in this research, told James Deneen of New Scientist, Earth has not created more liquid magma. Instead, scientists say they now have a more accurate understanding of what's already there. It's like getting a new lens on an old camera. Michael Poland, a research geophysicist and scientist assigned to the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory who was not involved in the study, told the New York Times' Robin George Andrews. The camera is the same, but now the resolution is better. You see more clearly. Yellowstone Supervolcano, located in northwestern Wyoming in Yellowstone National Park, is one of the largest volcanoes in the world. The mountain has erupted several times over the past 2.1 million years, including three large eruptions that covered the surrounding landscape in ash. The Yellowstone Caldera, which stretches 30 by 45 miles wide, was formed during one such eruption about 631,000 years ago. Seismic waves produced by earthquakes must pass through layers of material inside the Earth before reaching seismometers on the surface. The waves slow down when they reach molten rock, so researchers can use the time it takes to reach the seismometer to gain insight into how much magma is underground. The previous analysis assumed that seismic waves radiate linearly from the earthquake towards the seismometer. But the reality of their journey is much more different than that. This time, the supercomputer modeled the seismic waves in three dimensions, which gave scientists a more complete picture of the crystal slurry beneath Yellowstone, as study co-author Ross McGuire, a seismologist at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, told New Scientist, Most of Earth's history, from the formation of the Earth 4.6 billion years ago to approximately 541 million years ago, is known as the Precambrian time.
Rocks of this age are found in northern Yellowstone and in the hearts of the nearby Teton, Beartooth, Wind River, and Gross Venter mountain ranges. During the Precambrian and the subsequent Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras, 541 to 66 million years ago, the western United States was covered at times by oceans, sand dunes, tidal flats, and vast plains. From the end of the Mesozoic through the early Cenozoic, mountain building processes formed the Rocky Mountains. During the Cenozoic era, approximately the last 66 million years of Earth's history, widespread mountain building, volcanism, faulting, and glaciation sculpted the Yellowstone area. The Absaroka Range along the park's north and east sides was formed by numerous volcanic eruptions about 50 million years ago. This period of volcanism is not related to the present Yellowstone volcano. Approximately 30 million years ago, vast expanses of today's west began stretching apart along an east-west axis. This ongoing stretching process increased about 17 million years ago and created the modern basin and range topography, north-south mountain ranges with long north-south valleys, which characterizes much of the west, including the Yellowstone area.